Good afternoon. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rob Lutz. I'm chairman of the Board of Trustees of Salem State University. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the Nancy D. Harrington Campus Naming Celebration. As we gather today in honor and recognition of the late President Emeritor Dr. Nancy Harrington, I'm delighted to see so many community members come together to celebrate her life and legacy. How meaningful it is to have the opportunity to celebrate on the physical grounds that she worked so tirelessly to acquire during her tenure. On behalf of the Board of Tur Trustees, I would like to take a moment to thank the leadership of the Board. Today here we have with us Midge De Simone. Midge, would you wave if you're out there? She represents the, uh, the alumni. We have Paul Matera, former chair of the board, who is with us. He's been on the board for more than 10 years now. And we have trustee Jamie Belsito, and trustee is somewhere right in the middle here. And a former uh, trustee emerita, Pamela Scott. Thank you for your commitment to Salem State and for being here today. During our spring meeting, the Board of Trustees was very pleased to approve naming the university's central campus in honor of Dr. Harrington. It was really no thought or decision at all. It was an automatic. We were going to do it. <laughs> I had the opportunity to work closely with Dr. Harrington as a member of the Foundation Board, witnessing firsthand the far-reaching impact she had on the university, the community, and the Commonwealth both through the scholarship that was created in her, her honor and in the relationships and visions she had for advancing fundraising efforts. Dr. Harrington was a fierce public higher education advocate, a strong focus on the North Shore, and a powerful example of the kind of impact and transformation that can take share under a strong, dedicated, loyal leader. Now, in those words I just used to describe her, you'll notice I used the word strong force, powerful, dedicated, working tirelessly. We must remember back in 1990s, it was quite unusual for a woman to be given the top leadership spot in an institution like this. Her strength of character, her personality, and you all know she did have a very strong will, which everyone who knows her experienced directly. This, of course, opened up a trailblazer path for Nancy and for her career. With a profound 51-year career history at Salem State, she was a staunch advocate for this institution and the value of public education. From the land acquisition of this very campus that we're sitting on here, to some of the first ever record-breaking philanthropic donations in Salem State's college history, Dr. Harrington championed the recognition of the institution as a vital education and economic resource on the North Shore and beyond. She was a lifelong learner, a committed educator, climbing the ladder from student, alumni, teacher, administrator, and then president. Really amazing. Her tangible accomplishments were newsworthy, but her legacy also rides in her intangible accomplishments that are still having an impact on the university today. Community connections, partnerships, mentorships, and friendships. Simply put, she was and still is seen by so many as the soul of Salem State. Because of her lifelong dedication to this great institution, we come today here to gather to rename Central Campus to the Nancy D. Harrington Campus in recognition of her enduring commitment. Today, Salem State continues to grow and flourish from a solid foundation she built during her tenure, from the college next door to the university on the North Shore. Dr. Harrington's unwavering leadership changed the course of Salem State's own legacy, both physically and intellectually. We are forever grateful for her deep-rooted personal and professional involvement. Thank you all for being here today to celebrate this phenomenal woman, and thank you, President Emerita Harrington. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the 14th president of Salem State University, someone I work closely with, John D. Keenan. Good afternoon, everyone. 
What a beautiful day. President Harrington would have it no other way. There was a, there was a cloud around a little while ago, but I'm sure she scared it away. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Lutz, for those kind remarks about President Harrington and for your own passion and commitment to advancing the mission of public higher education. I would like to welcome and thank all of you for joining us today for this very special event. Before I begin, I want to recognize a few people in the crowd. Uh, Chair Lutz already recognized our trustees. I also want to recognize uh, Trustee Emeritus Jake Siegel with us today. Jake, nice to see you in the front. I believe our foundation board chairman, Kathy Scrabit, is here as well, as, re as well as Annalisa De Palma, and I think I see Paul Petrowski back there also. Thank you for joining us. And certainly, and certainly many, many more former trustees, foundation board members, alumni association members, thank you all for joining us on this afternoon. I'm also pleased to welcome back number 13, my predecessor, President Emerita Patricia McGuire Missouri. It is wonderful to welcome you and Rick back to campus, President Missouri. And I would also like to acknowledge some local, local elected officials who have joined us today, several of whom are Vikings. Mayor Kim Driscoll, Representative Paul Tucker, City Councilor Steve Dibble, former Councilor Tom Fury, all who are we extremely proud to count among Salem State alumni. City Councilor Domingo Dominguez, Essex County Sheriff Kevin Coppinger, and Mayor of Lynn Tom McGee. I know Mayor McGee has a mask on today, but I could see the smile. He's retiring. <laughs> and I want to also thank him for his decades of public service. He has been an outstanding public servant. As we begin the new academic year, it is indeed a picture-perfect day to recognize President Emerita Nancy D. Harrington on the campus made possible by her leadership. Behind you is our newest residence hall, Viking Hall. Behind me is the Bertalone School of Business, named for Hen alumnus Henry Bertalone. I'm very proud to announce that with the momentum built by both Presidents Harrington and President Missouri that we recently achieved AACSB, Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business Accreditation. Now what does that mean? Hold the applause. What does that mean? That puts us in an elite category of the top 5% of business schools in the world. All, all of this, all of this goes back to the acquisition of this property back in the 90s, made possible by President Harrington. Educator, visionary, trailblazer. These are just a few of the words that come to mind when I think of Dr. Harrington. Others include role model, friend, and mentor to many. Like me, I suspect many of you were intimidated when you first met President Harrington. Come on, you can admit it. I was just speaking with Ed Edelman. He was scared to death when he interviewed with her. Shortly after being sworn in as state representative in 2005, I was called to her office for a meeting. Yes, I was called to her office, like the principal's office, for a meeting. And anybody who had been there knows exactly what I meant. It was my first time in Meyer Hall, in her large corner office, adorned with artifacts representing years of accomplishment, commanded respect. A well-known and powerful leader, Dr. Harrington's larger-than-life presence filled the room. Just then, and perhaps sensing my fear, her welcoming and friendly smile, saying, how are you doing, Representative, put me right at ease. At that point, some decade and a half, into her presidency, she was determined to attain university status. And we strategized, perhaps conspired as a better description, on how we could finally achieve that goal. In fact, I had the honor and the privilege to accompany Dr. Harrington to her final State House visit at a hearing as, as president in 2007, at a hearing to testify before the Joint Committee on Higher Education about the very importance of university status not only for Salem State, but for all the state colleges. Later, I was fortunate to work closely with Dr. Meservi to realize this vision. And Dr. Harrington joined us at the State House for the signing of the legislation that made us Salem State 
University. Dr. Harrington's contributions to Salem State and public higher education are seemingly endless. Embodying everything that Salem State stands for, Dr. Harrington had a keen ability to inspire support that allowed Salem State to grow and evolve. She even had her own tagline, consistency through change. Among her many accomplishments, Dr. Harrington initiated and directed the development of the Master of Science in Nursing program, the master's degree programs in business administration and social work. Each of these was the first of its kind among the Massachusetts State Colleges. In addition, Dr. Harrington herself was a woman of many firsts. The first graduate of Salem State to become its president. The first female president in the school's history. I'm gonna repeat that. The first female president in the school's history. The first, Salem State, the first Salem resident to lead this institution and the first Salem State president to secure a major multi-million dollar gift. Dr. Harrington's legacy is deeply rooted in the growth of Salem State and the people who make up the fabric of our community, particularly our students. It was not uncommon to see her walking the halls, popping into offices to say hello, or sitting at a cafeteria table having lunch with faculty, staff, and students. I'm sure the students were trembling. Her thank you notes to faculty and staff were legendary in our items that people still cherish today. In the spring of 2003, Dr. Harrington wrote, Salem State has never been a spectator by the side of the road watching a race pass by. Throughout our long history, we have run every race, passed every mile marker, sought every advantage that would take us to the head of the crowd. We have always endeavored to seek the lead and retain it. Dr. Harrington's genuine and inspiring commitment to education was a hallmark of her tenure as president to ensure that all students had the access and opportunity to receive a high quality education here at Salem State. Upon her retirement in 2007, the community came together to create a scholarship in her honor to benefit achieving graduate, high achieving graduate and continuing education students. Her legacy lives on in these students and the endowed scholarship ensures that Salem State's commitment to lifelong learning remains a permanent part of our educational culture. Today, we honor Dr. Harrington's legacy by continuing to run that race, to lead, and to encourage our students to never stand on the sidelines. We remember our roots, our commitment to education and inclusivity, and the people, the students, the faculty, the staff, and of course, the alumni, who are all the very heart of this wonderful place that feels like home to many. It is a wonderful tribute to be here with all of you today, and I can't think of a more fitting way than to name this campus after President Harrington. It is now my honor, it is now my honor to introduce a very good friend of President Harrington. Professor Gwen Roseman has been a member of the Salem State community for almost 45 years over 20 years of which were spent as an academic administrator. She currently teaches part-time in the departments of English, sociology, and psychology. Professor Roseman was not only a colleague of Dr. Harrington's, but also a dear friend. Professor Roseman. Thank you, John. Um, honored guest, some really old faces. Oh my God, it's like a reunion. I feel like there's a lunch table somewhere with Nancy at the head of it, and we're running things. Thank you. Um, I'm honored, and I'm really struggling because uh, it's hard, you know? Nancy, what, Na Nancy, Nancy. So, I just want to say a few things of my friend and my colleague, of working with her and of having the honor to have her be a part of my life. When uh, the search committee was formed to choose that next president, uh, I was a member of that search committee. And of course, Nancy was the 
in-house candidate, and it was a competitive search. And the thing about Nancy was not just that she knew this campus, had grown up on it, had been an inter integral part of it for so many years, but the sense that she had an affinity for what was and is Salem State. And once she became president, it became very clear that it was not simply an affinity, but it was a love. And that's really what I want, the thought that I want us to hold today, that Nancy Harrington loved this campus, loved every aspect of it. Its people, its buildings, its work, everything it represented, she loved. When I think of love, I, I mean to have a feeling about something, to care about something in a way that you encourage it and you enhance it and you speak for it and you value it. That's the kind of love that Nancy had for Salem State, the value, the encouragement. And I want to say a word particularly about her work with the faculty that she recognized and valued the work of the faculty and what the faculty represented to our students and to this community. And so for Nancy, the faculty was always the center, the heart of what we did. And she moved mountains. She moved mountains to make sure that the work of the faculty was valued. Similarly, she supported the work of other parts of the institution that, that supported the work of the faculty, supported the mission of the campus. And she was constantly focused, as John mentioned, focused on the role of public higher education. In a place where, in a state where, and I can say this because I'm not a native and this was always a shock to me, and, and in the Commonwealth where public higher education was not necessarily valued, and coming from the Midwest where public higher education is valued, I always found that shocking and found that competition with the private institutions to be distressing. Nancy Harrington valued public higher education and its role, its purpose. <laughs> that every single student, every individual, whether we were talking about a kid, and I have had these students in my office, a student who's English, who barely spoke English but somehow got themselves admitted. And that particular student went on to be, went on to be a chemist with NASA. Whether we were talking about that student who came to Salem to fulfill a dream, or a student, a widow, who had waited, we used to sort of say you waited till your husband died, huh? To fulfill her dream and at the age of 74, 75, crossed the stage and shook Nancy Harrington's hand and graduated. These were the students. These were the students that Nancy Harrington said, this university is for you. Whether you are majoring, choosing a career or field of art or nursing or history, we open our doors for you and that passion that Nancy held for public higher education and the opportunity that it holds for every student is something that should infuse every decision, every idea that we who stay in her name support. Nancy was, in addition to my colleague, she was my friend. And of course, there are stories I'm not about to tell you. We'll just let those lie. Um, 
and there are a couple of people here who I know some of the, know some of the stories, but that's okay, that to sit in my office in academic affairs and to look up and there is Nancy, all six feet of her filling my door, saying, can we talk? And knowing that, first of all, the honor of being trusted by this woman, that she would come in and close the door and say, okay, now what do you think? And we had this line. She would say, Gwen, what do you think about? And I would say, Nancy, don't ask if you don't want to know. Because we had truth between us. We had truth between us. She was a friend, a colleague, someone that my life was enriched by. And we like to say once in a while that we kind of grew up together. She was a couple of years older than I, not by much. But we grew up at Salem State together, watched it become Salem State College and grow into the university that it is. And I can't help now, I know, I know that the shower that passed through, the clouds that were here, she said, get out of here, it is my day. <laughs> and I am so happy to be here and so honored to be a part of this naming of the Nancy D. Harrington campus of Salem State University. Thank you. hard for me. You would have messed up my opening line if you didn't say it, so thank you, Professor Roseman. I would like to thank the Salem State community for giving me the opportunity to speak today, and I promise I'll keep my remarks brief. I need a half hour of your time. That's it. In order to explain the impact that President Harrington had on my life, I have to start at the beginning, the story of how we met. It was my freshman year during Welcome Week. I was at the North Campus Chartwells with my new college friends. When we walked in, I noticed President Harrington sitting having her lunch, and I pointed her out to our group. They were not that impressed. I, on the other hand, was starstruck. One of my new friends, Pat Alamo, turned and looked at me and said, I dare you to grab your lunch, walk over, and sit down. I looked right at him and I said, dare accept it. I got my lunch, walked over, introduced myself, and asked if I could join her. She said yes, a decision I often wondered if she regretted. <laughs> we talked about my impression of Salem State so far, what my major was, goals, and my interests. We both finished our lunch. I thanked her for allowing me to join her and we went our separate ways. A week later during lunch at North Campus Chartwell, to my surprise, there was President Harrington sitting and having her lunch. As I walked by, I said hello and asked how she was doing. She looked up at me and said, why hello, Miss Slazar. I am doing well today, and yourself? I remember thinking, oh my God, she knows my name. 
Over the next three years, I would join President Harrington for lunch at least once a month, and our conversations never lacked. We talked about a variety of different topics, how I was doing on papers I was writing, if I ever got that new job, or if I ever passed that weather and climate midterm. But to me, the most rewarding topics were her words of wisdom, guidance, and advice she shared. I remember during one lunch, I asked why she chose to eat in the dining hall. Her response is something that I will never forget. How can I be an effective leader moving Salem State towards change if I'm not aware of where I should be leading us? That the view from where I sit is much different than is what is going on in our community and what we need. Just because there is president in front of my name doesn't make me any more important than anybody else. At the end of the day, we are all Salem State Vikings, aren't we? I took every opportunity I had to pick her brain, observe, listen, and learn all the wisdom she had to offer. There were three main things that she taught me. One, that you can never make another first impression. A firm handshake and eye contact can gain respect. That listening, observing, and being present is not just key to being a positive leader, but to being a contributing member of any community. And third, that every choice I made, I wasn't just representing myself. I was representing whatever organization I was leading, whatever job I had, and my family. That during my time at Salem State, I was representing our community, a responsibility I shouldn't take lightly. Now I'm not saying I have mastered any of those, but I work at them every day and at least now I am aware. When I won SGA president, it was like all of my dreams came true. I was going to get to work beside my mentor. Then she announced her retirement. <laughs> a decision my parents said was intentional. <laughs> it may have been. During one of our last lunches, I asked how would I manage without our talks and her guidance. Her response is something I will always cherish. Miss Slazar, you will be just fine. Everything was inside of you from day one. I just helped you in realizing it yourself. But if you ever need a reminder, I'm always a phone call away. She never gave me that personal number. <laughs> it's just some things I hold in still. <laughs> the same way that President Harrington helped mold me into the leader I am today is how she led Salem State. She saw the potential. She saw the bigger picture. She saw what was needed and she saw how to achieve it, not solely as president, but as the Salem State community. Central Campus, along with so much more, wouldn't exist if it wasn't for her leadership, her vision, and more importantly, for her. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for President Harrington. That dare I took my freshman year was the best dare that I have ever taken. Thank you so much for allowing me to share mine and President Harrington's journey with you today. And now I'm going to. <laughs> and it is my pleasure to now introduce a double Viking, longtime volunteer, and supporter of Salem State and fellow classmate of Dr. Harrington's. Henry Dombowski, 1960, a cohort of alumni who have stayed connected and engaged to both their alma mater and each other since their graduation day. Mr. Dombowski. Good afternoon, uh, and it's my privilege to represent the class of 1960 which uh, in my estimation, of course, has turned out to be the best class that ever graduated. <laughs> I met Nancy in September 1956 at Salem Teachers College. I have to get my notes out now. My very first impression, 
during that first week of orientation was, wow, she's tall, <laughs> she's quiet, almost shy, not the Nancy you guys knew, and she was friendly. About six weeks later, I said, oh my God, she's smart. You know, she, every class we had, she would get A's and everything. And of course, it went on to prove that every single term of our four years, as we went from Salem Teachers College to Salem State College, she was on the dean's list, always. My second impression, after knowing how smart she was, was that she was athletic. Dear God, she played basketball, she played soccer, she golfed, she did, I, all I did was bowl. <laughs> you know. And you know, I went back into our yearbook to see, were there pictures of Nancy during her athletic days? Unfortunately, in 1960, there were eight pictures of men's athletics, none of women. I think we've all improved, I hope we've improved, and I hope if there's a yearbook that it's reformed to include the skills that the girls displayed in our class. <laughs> our personal closest contact came, and there's a picture of it on that screen over there, when we were both members of Elementary Education One, which meant for that year, as juniors, we would have every class together. I dreaded every class because she was always smarter than everybody else. And then came the time when we had to spend eight weeks together in the grade five Horace Mann training school with Miss Horahan. I'm going to tell you, oh, I remember Miss Horahan? Tough. Tough. She ran around with her notes in her arm and she made us stay after class to prepare for the next day, gave us critiques about how we could be better teachers. And I have to say, that eight weeks changed my life as a teacher. Competing with Nancy Harrington to be better than her or as good as her changed my life. It really did. And I'm going to tell you, we got one point difference in our final grade. And it was the only time in my life that I ever beat Nancy. I got an 87, she got an 86. She made honor roll, I did not. She had, as a junior, all the honors that our class could give. In the old days, when we were small, there were these great traditions of class day with laurel chains and speakers. Nancy was selected as an honor to be a member of the laurel chain. Also that year, President Meyer and Mrs. Meyer created, and I don't know if it exists anymore, an honors program. Nancy was one of seven elementary students invited to be a part of that honors program where they had to do a service with someone in the community to improve their lives. After we graduated, strangely enough, we both enrolled in the master's program here at Salem. Dear God, I was having classes again with Nancy. <laughs> right? I finished mine quickly so I would not be in the same graduation class as her. Because she would have been magna cum laude and I would have been non laude. When Nancy became dean of the graduate school, she called on me to come back and teach at the college. I was honored, but I said, Nancy, I cannot teach. I'm a superintendent. I don't have time. You don't say no to Nancy. So of course, I taught classes in the graduate school for Nancy. When she moved on to be president, she asked me to be the coordinator of the graduate program for people getting their master's degrees. Again, I said, Nancy, I don't have the time. I did the coordination for two years. <laughs> so that's when I started to experience the force that Nancy was to be. She was always a perfect lady and a kid when we were graduating. Then she became this force. It was always in her. It was through her academics that she showed us. It was through her sports. And then she took command. Now, my only regret is that Nancy and many of the women from our class met monthly for lunches. I can't share any gossip because men weren't invited. But our class has remained close. When we were planning our 50th reunion, Nancy of course was on that committee 
and I challenged Nancy to give a generous donation so we could start an endowment that would be given annually to someone in education at what was then, we graduated, it was Salem State College, now you come, become a university. So Nancy met my grant and she got another 5,000 from Francis Hunkins out in Washington and we started an endowment and pledged that our class would raise $100,000 to be used for scholarships for students going into education. I'm happy to tell you that as of June, we had raised $105,301, and it's not over. Also, something that Nancy did at our 50th reunion made me think about sharing this moment with you today. I want to ask Brian. Brian, could you stand up, please, in front of the podium? <sighs> when we were having our 50th, 50th reunion, uh, Nancy set out a plan to give a white rose, excuse me, to give a white rose in a vase to everyone who had passed. And I have six classmates from the class of 1960 to give Brian a rose in honor of Nancy. Please. We're a little slow, we're a little arthritic, we have a few canes, but these are all great members of the class of 1960. And it is now my great pleasure to, in, to introduce, I guess you are, if you didn't hear him yesterday, I hope he repeats some of the things he made yesterday at the memorial service, because his comments were fabulous. Uh, nephew, alumnus, Brian McCullen. McCullen, sorry. Hi, I'm actually just going to be a sort of a... Ooh, can I say one more thing? Yes. <laughs> I wanted to notice my shoes. Yeah, we did. Right? What about your socks? Yeah. No socks. Yeah. My shoes are here today, 54 years later, because I wore them as a junior and as a senior on the campus, and Nancy loved them. And commented on my right. clothing all the time, but she said, I love those shoes. Mm -hmm. So I pulled them out today in honor of Nancy Blackburn. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> yeah, I'm just actually up here to do a sort of a quick segue into uh, my family spokesperson, you know, Neil Harrington, former mayor of Salem. But I would like to make two comments that I think are really relevant here. And number one is, Henry was tactful in understating the fact that Nancy was a little shy Growing up, Nancy was painfully shy, almost to the point that I would have described it as cripplingly shy. And she avoided things like confrontation. Uh, that was not who she was. She was often not demonstrative or emotive because it was difficult for her. But I will tell you this, that when I was informed by Cheryl that they were considering naming the campus after Nancy, I knew precisely that this would have been something that she wouldn't have been able to, in her wildest dreams, handle 14 years after the fact, to have the main campus named after her. And it's almost difficult for me to visualize her holding it together during the last hour. Um, I don't know what it would have done with her because she could only summon all of this formidable personality and all of this passion through the channel that was Salem State University because she cared so incredibly much about Salem State and all that it represented and all that it could do. And this w enabled her, it really made it easy for her to get in people's faces about it. When she raised funds, when she, when she proselytized for Salem State, she could channel that and that was something that a lot of performers have. But believe me, it took some overcoming as a young girl. Um, this is pretty much the perfect gift as far I'm concerned. I guess I said to somebody, the purchase of the Sylvania plant here 
was analogous in the context of the school to the Louisiana Purchase for the United States. <laughs> <laughs> and I know this is personal bias on my part, but you know, President Jefferson got like what, Jefferson Avenue named after him? <laughs> I, I would, no offense against Jefferson Avenue specifically, but I would much prefer to have the main campus named after me. And, and thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of my family members and my aunt, because if she's up there listening, and I don't have any doubt that she is, this is moving her to tears. And thank you very much. And I'll now bring up my cousin, Neil. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon, everyone. I've just been uh, asked to share a few remarks, if I might, <clears throat> from a somewhat different perspective on this uh, auspicious occasion uh, about the connection um, between Salem State and not just Nancy, but the Harrington family. It's a relationship that began over six decades ago. It continues to this day, and God willing, it will extend for several years to come. The relationship to some people really only featured two principal characters, Nancy and my father, Kevin. But the reality is that that relationship has stretched out and embraced dozens and dozens and dozens of members of my extended family. I can't begin to name all the uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews, spouses, children, grandchildren, including my own, not my own grandchildren, but one of my daughters who has a master's degree here, my sister who graduated from here. It goes on and on. Multiple generations of the Harrington family have had a close relationship with Salem State for a number of years. The trail may have been blazed by Nancy and Kevin in terms of the relationship between our family and the college, but the underlying truth is that, as I said, several members of the extended family have benefited from the first class education that they have received at the college and now the university, and I have no doubt that they will continue to benefit from that from the, in the years to come. The bond between the Harringtons and Salem State is enduring, as I said, and is fitting that we're here to cement that bond, so to speak, by dedicating the central campus to our beloved Nancy. If you'll permit me just a minute to digress from this theme and talk a little bit about Nancy as a product of the Harrington family, rather than to focus on her enviable legacy here at the university, which has been so eloquently stated by the previous speakers, I just want to give you perhaps a little bit of insight into where Nancy came from. She was a member of what I always like to think of, and I freely will borrow this phrase, as the greatest generation of the Harrington family. She was born in Salem into an impoverished childhood, as were so many of her contemporaries at that time. I don't have the time to go into talking about the remarkable legacies that all of the other people of that generation have left for the many Harrington descendants who are here today. But I'll just talk a bit about Nancy. Her father, Leo, one of nine children, was a plumber. He dropped dead at the age of 42 of a heart attack while Nancy's mother was expecting her. She never knew her father. Her two older siblings, Carol and Leo Jr., known as Lee, were respectively 16 and 15 years older than she when she was born. Soon they would be off to college. Nancy's mother, Nora Sullivan Harrington, never gave in to a sense of fatalistic despair following the loss of her breadwinning spouse, for she was a woman of indomitable will. If you see a pattern here, raise your hand. <laughs> Against difficult odds, Nora Harrington struggled to keep her family afloat. At the same time, she instilled in Nancy the type of personal characteristics 
that can transcend poverty, prejudice, and there was prejudice against the Irish in those days, and personal family tragedy. Nancy learned never to be afraid. She learned never to shy away from a challenge and to always give her best. She cultivated within her own persona, and Brian just made a reference to this, an earnestness and a willfulness of purpose that can overcome obstacles such as economic disadvantage and occasional social awkwardness. She shared these traits with so many of the people of her generation, as I mentioned. But of course, most of them never went on to public life. The public aspects of Nancy's career are well known, but I'm convinced that it was the development of her character, born of adversity and nurtured by a persistent mother and the love and support of her siblings that helped Nancy get her footing in life. She adored Carol and Lee. And never having children of her own, she became an integral part of their families. Excuse me. Many of whom are here today. After Nancy graduated from high school, it was Salem State that provided her with the opportunity for a lifetime of dedication to teaching and promoting the cause of public higher education that was shared not only with her siblings, her brother became the president of Massachusetts Maritime Academy, but also my father and countless other public servants, such as the one that president, ones that President Keenan alluded to earlier, who spent good portions of their public lives advocating for public higher education. Nancy gave so much to Salem State, but the college, now a university, gave her so much in return and provided her with the chance to cultivate her overwhelming desire to help others, perhaps as some sort of recompense for her childhood when others always did for her. Who knows? She was almost fanatical whenever you would speak with her about the importance of education and lifelong learning, whether it was for those who didn't always follow the straight path from school into work, those who were looking to go back to college, or those who came from other countries and cultures where opportunities such as those provided by Salem State did not exist. After many years of waitings in the wings, Nancy, of course, was appointed president, and she stepped into the spotlight to walk the tightrope of public life out of the classroom and in front of the reporters and people asking questions where well, the slightest misstep can erase years and years of sacrifice for the public good, where your good name can be subject to the whimsy of prevailing political winds and social approbation or even disdain. She may have observed the political careers of her Uncle Joe or her cousins Kevin and Michael, all three of whom attained political office, but as we know, she carved her own path and what a trailblazer she was. For many years, those of us in the family marveled at how skillfully she led Salem State through the development of what was once one campus college, one building college at one point, before Fred Meyer got involved, um, into a multi-campus facility that you see here uh, today, carefully threading her way through potentially volatile relationships with neighbors and even the city itself. As mayor in the 1990s, it was instructive for me to observe how Nancy had cultivated a level of trust that allowed her to balance her goals for Salem State with the fact that the institution was primarily surrounded by residential neighborhoods. If you think that was easy, think again. Look at what Harvard is going through right now with Alston. Think of how skillfully Nancy balanced the needs of the college and the surrounding neighborhood's concerns. The reservoir of goodwill that she accumulated over a lifetime of employment at Horace Mann in Salem State was skillfully employed to strike just the right balance between supporting the desires 
of those who love the fact that Salem State was such an integral part of our community and mollifying the concerns of those who did not. Nancy faced her share of doubters throughout her career and overcame obstacles in her personal and professional life that would have deflated a person of lesser character. Our family is very proud of her and we're so grateful to her alma mater for honoring her here today. She and the entire Harrington family will always be a part of Salem State. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. 